Today, we sit on the brink of a titanic struggle, where two of the most beloved hipster guns in the history of hipster guns face off in what we call the hipster head-to-head, -head, the Beretta PX4 and the Walther P99. All right, my fellow gun hipsters, I'd like to welcome you to the first hipster head-to-head -head between the Beretta PX4 Compact and the Walther P99. And these are both polymer-framed, double-action, single-action, mid-sized 9 millimeters from Europe. So inevitably, since they're both in my collection, we have to compare them. And they both have some interesting merits, and I think... It's going to be an interesting discussion. Initially, in my PX4 review, I, I talked about the fact, you know, how, what, what a great shooter this gun is. But the fact that, that the P99 is a solid contender, it, it compares very favorably to this. And um, certainly there are some differences, and, and each gun has, has its strengths and, and some weaknesses. But I, I love both these guns, and it, it's hard to pick which one I like better. They, they both excel in, the, in their own ways. You know, shooting, just going to the range and shooting these guns, if you just load it up, put the guns in single action, and just start carving out a hole in your target, I don't think anything compares to, to the PX4. And I have some fairly, fairly high-end guns, accurate guns, Walther P88, Browning High Power, Beretta 92, they all shoot great, but Man, there is just something special about the way the PX4 shoots. This rotating barrel mechanism, which I, I go into depth about in my review on it, it really makes for, for a nice, stable, just really intuitive, really communicative feel that really comes comes to bear when, when you're shooting the gun in single action. Now, in double action, the, the Beretta double action trigger, as I've said in... Many of my other reviews, they're not my favorite double action triggers. I tend to feel like there's a little more over travel. You know, I, I get a little bit of a jerk when the hammer falls in double action and my sight picture moves around a little bit. Now with the P99, the single action is just fantastic in this gun. And if, if you check out my review, it's it's really unlike anything else. It's, it's crisp, gives you you know, a, a good tactile point of reference, but it's very subtle, it's very understated, it really allows you to to stay connected to your point of aim and you just hit what you're aiming at. And I actually think the single action trigger is better on the P99. Now the, the recoil impulse and just the just the feel of, of shooting the gun I think is better in, in the PX4. It's just that rotating barrel really softens and lengthens and relaxes the recoil impulse. Where where's this you know, it, it has the feel of a normal browning tilt barrel design. And um, that's not bad, it's just it's the way most pistols feel. And, you know, a rotating barrel or a falling block design like the 9 Breda 92 or a Walther P38, P5, those just feel a little more plush and a little more communicative to me in terms of their recoil impulse. Now, I think I think the, the P99's ergonomics are such that... You know, they're very, very intentional, very deliberate, very highly designed in terms of how how you interface with the pistol. And that really mitigates any any issues with, with recoil or anything like that. And it, it shoots very well. Still, again, if I'm just putting around through a single hole, PX4, I prefer. Now, I, I think is if moving away from that just pure expression of, of single action shootability. I think I think the P99's merits really come into perspective and I think the double action got a very very smooth take up and um, it leads right into really 
the same break you get on the single action. And the reset's so short, like it's just incredibly short. And you know, your transition from double action to single action is very seamless. When I do double action and single action pairs with the P99, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty accurate. I get tighter groups with dingle, double action and single action with this than I do a lot of my other guns, and this included. Both guns shoot well, fast. The rotating barrel softens the recoil impulse, and it, it's, you can shoot it very quickly, and you know, there's not a lot of muzzle rise. And um, even though the P99 is a little more snappy because it's light, you know, that, that trigger reset and these unique ergonomics, which kind of force you, you know, this big hump kind of forces you to keep the muzzle down. As long as you're squeezing, I mean, this thing just stays super flat when you're shooting it. So, I mean, this thing feels like a freaking machine gun when you start running it hard. Again, if I'm just doing my normal 50 round drill, which, which I usually show in my reviews, where I just take a box of ammo and try to put it in the center of the bullseye, I usually get better results with this, but just just about every other you know kind of shooting I'm doing, I feel like the P99 handles a little better. It's just a little more balanced overall, and that, I mean that's not to say that the, the all around the PX4 is not not an awesome gun. It is that the double action's fine. It's it's usable. It's not as good as this, and um, you can still shoot it fast, and it's still you know accurate. It handles well, so. They're both great shooting guns, and they're both much better shooting guns than just normally what you find on the, on the shelf as far as just modern striker-fired guns. These things are going to shoot circles around, in my opinion. You know, your, your run-of-the-mill Glocks and MPs, they're both awesome for that perspective. Now, as far as concealed carry, they're both okay. You know, I in my PX4 review, I, I talk about how this is the... This gun has the widest slide of all my pistols, and that's not ideal for a concealed carry. You definitely feel the width, you feel the girth in this thing when you're carrying it. And while the, the P99 is a little bit slimmer, it's not quite as wide as the, the PX4, it's still not exactly slim. I mean, it's um, slimmer than, I guess, slightly slimmer than a Beretta 92 or a Legacy Slide P229, but the, the slide on a P99 is going to be a bit wider than, say, like a, a regular P200 Series SIG or a Glock. So, you know, neither of them are super slim options for carry. The P99 is lighter, which is nice. And But the thing that I, that I don't love about the P99 is it's got this, um, what I'll call the lobe. And it's this just extension that comes back, uh, you know, over the back strap. And when you're carrying in the appendix position, which I do, this thing really kind of pokes into your your FUDA and or your FUPA. If you don't know what that is, look, look it up. It kind of pokes into your spare tire, for for lack of a better word. It's just a little uncomfortable. Now, if you tuck a shirt or two in behind it, and uh, in all honesty, I've been when I've been carrying lately, I've been sticking a beer koozie <laughs> behind the gun and between between the gun and my body, and it, it puts a nice soft cushion there, and I. I it actually helps a lot and the thing stays there so you know they're not neither of these are my first choice for a carry gun but they're both great shooting guns and they're both 100 percent reliable so you can't really go wrong from that st standpoint if i had to pick one i don't know if i could <laughs> they're both great i love them both and they're both they're both worth owning for for the px4 it's just the unique shooting characteristics of this rotating barrel. If you, if you haven't experienced a Beretta PX4, it's just something, if you're a fan of, of just seamless, intuitive accuracy, you have to experience a, a Beretta PX4. They, they shoot great. They shoot like nothing else. But I think, you know, the P99 creates just a more complete equation of a great handling, great shooting handgun. And and for me, it, it kind of occupies this unique space in, in terms of its its history and its you know what it means for the history of modern handguns. In in that it's it's kind of the last of the Wonder Nines, and, and you know the Wonder Nines began in, in the 70s with the Smith and Wesson Model 59 and progressed into the Beretta 92, the Sig P226, the Walther P88, and. Um, you know, it, it kind of succeeded the P88, and it's kind of the last of that lineage of, of pistols. So, for me, it, it's 
it's more of a interesting historical footnote and and I think it's it's trigger system and just how it approaches the DASA paradigm is just really interesting with the P99 and I love it for that. I have had the PX4 longer and you know, I've had this gun since 2017 and it's never failed me. It's super accurate. It's super reliable. It's it's just great and everybody that shoots it loves it. So they're both awesome and um, you know if, if you are interested in guns that are, that are not quite just the status quo, but that aren't super expensive or just obscure, or really hard to find. You can find both these on the market. These are still readily available, and you know, being made and easy to find on GunBroker, they're you know less than six hundred dollars. You know, I've been finding them kind of in the mid fives um, for for the normal PX4 compact. This is the Langdon edition, but honestly, I don't really know that you need to spend. The extra couple hundred bucks for the Landon Edition, the normal one is just fine. It shoots great. It has the same really nice trigger dynamics. And with the P99, you know, obviously the, the PPQ and the PDP kind of are, are the replacements for the P99 from Walther. But interestingly, a batch of brand new P99s was manufactured and imported in 2022. And as of now, as of today, January 2nd, they're still available on Gunbroker. So you can buy a brand new P99. I think... I'm seeing them like mid sixes, so get one while you can if you're interested in the P99. Honestly, you can't go wrong with both of these guns, and if you get the chance, I would recommend owning both of them because they're both awesome. For polymer frame guns in this day and age, they are really unique and really special and really awesome. So there you go. That is the official head-to-head, -head, the hipster head-to-head -head of PX4 and the Walther P99. Thanks also, since I filmed my review of the P99 a few weeks ago and uh, most of the footage for this video, Walther has announced their final edition of the P99. So I guess it's being quote unquote discontinued in some quasi official capacity, <laughs> is what that means. Um, but, you know, they had a teaser video on it and you can get. The P99 Final Edition, which is a second generation P99, I, I go into the differences in my full review of the P99, but it's going to have a, um, the Final Edition is going to have this OD green frame, similar to this, which is a first generation. So it's going to have this kind of two-tone look, and it'll say Final Edition on the slide, so that's pretty cool. Um, halfway through January 2023, there are actually still tons of regular new P99s for sale on GunBroker. There's just tons of them, and um, they're not the final edition, so I think those will come uh, here soon. But, you know, we should have plenty of brand new P99s um, available here for the next foreseeable future. So a, a lot came over in 2022, and um, more will be coming, I think, when they start to introduce that final edition. So Now's a good time to get a P99, and you know, after this year, I think the the pickings will kind of dwindle, and we probably won't see many new P99s into the future. So, just wanted to mention that. So, thank you so much for watching, and uh, like and subscribe. Tune in to my uh, my next review, my next official review, which will be my Colt Trooper 357.